Hi and welcome back to the channel. This time we're going to talk again about WebRTC and how to connect two clients over the web with data channels, video channels and audio channels. And to illustrate that, let's just clear up the logs. I published my app to my Android phone and put it on a separate network and my editor is running on my local machine in my Wi-Fi. And if I now click on WebRTC data test, you see that my Android client received a message over the data channel. I can also send a message over the WebSocket channel over here. And the other way around, I can send a message over the data channel. It's shown here in the logs too and the WebSocket, which is usually needed for signaling purposes. And if I now start on my Android side, my audio transmission and my video transmission, Now do the same thing the other way around. You see that everything was transmitted clearly, although it was a little bit loud. And now I'm going to show you how you can do it yourself. As always, welcome back. As always, a big thanks to my channel members. Becoming a channel member really helps the channel grow and helps me doing tutorials like this and providing you the source code. If you're interested in the WebRTC source code, please make sure to subscribe at the channel memberships on tier 3 and send me your GitHub username. I'll just add it to the repo and you can access the source code with all the scripts and all the samples where we've been working on so far and all future episodes of this too. So the, enough of the YouTube stuff. Let's get our hands on started with our sample scene here. This is just a normal scene as you know it community with a light, the main camera and a separate streaming camera, which is over here, which just films the cube, which is turning. This is this test cube, here's simple rotation here. And we have an audio source here with some ambient forest sounds which we will transmit over the network and a receive audio source which will play the audio clip which we are going to receive. As we now only have one audio clip for each client, this will overlap and sound a little bit strange, but it will illustrate how we can share audio over the net. And we have our stun all channels script here which has a reference to a streaming camera, a source raw image on the UI, which will just show what are we are going to stream, a receive image here, which will illustrate what we're receiving from other clients, like in a chat application or send audio source, our receive audio source, and a few buttons to start the audio video transmission, to start to test the WebSocket, connection to test the data channel connection and to clear our logs here, which are logged in the back at the logger text. And this logger text is reference to a screen logger script here. For everyone who is not able to test on a second device or just wants to save some time, some time, there is a second object here, which basically matches this first object. And if you want to test purely in the editor, you can just start it enable the second object and the logs will show us that there is a WebRTC connection established over the net. And if I now clear the logs just for a little bit of better overview and send a message over the data channel, you will see that we're receiving this and that the object that received this is the second object here. Nevertheless, that's the overview. Let's head into the code and in the code is uh, if you watched the previous tutorials you might know more or less everything of the code yet it's just a little bit of a different composition here are our references for the inspector all the sources and the images and our booleans for the inspector so we can start 
our test sessions, even from the inspect, and we don't need a specific UI for that. I just added the UI so it looks a little bit better. Here is our peer connection, our data channel for sending data, our data channel for receiving data. This is due to a small implementation error of WebRTC. The receiver data channel object must be cached, otherwise it's not possible to receive data. So this is just a small optimization. A WebSocket for a connection, a client ID, which is not used efficiently at the moment, but will be used later on. Our signaling variables and session descriptions here, which you already know from the previous tutorials, which are basically JSON data, which we're converting from and to this object. So the signaling process will be handled. And in the start method, we're just connecting to our WebSocket server. This is very likely not the address that you will be using, but I am using now, and this is a glitch WebSocket server on the web, which looks like this, a WebSocket, a port, and a WebSocket server, which forwards our messages to all other clients except ourselves and logs everything that's going on here. If you look at the logs, everything is here. Just clear it for later on. If you wanna have the source code, feel free to pause the video here and type it here. And you can create that on Twitch by just create a new project and create a new node project. Back to the code. We are creating a new WebSocket and on WebSocket open, by the way, this WebSocket is created with native WebSocket, which gives us the possibility to send custom headers, which we're going to need when working with Glitch and the secure WebSocket connection. On open, we're just creating a new stun server config with the default stun server from Google. You can use your own stun server here and please be aware that with, I had at least had the experience with some Fritz boxes that they are blocking the communication ports. So WebSocket connection will work, but the WebRTC connection is blocked. So if you run into that, make sure that your web, uh, not your web, your Fritz box is configured or your router is configured the right way. After that, we create a new peer connection, RTC peer connection with everything. A candidate in it, send the text from the candidate to the WebSocket. So everybody who's connected will get the candidate messages. I see connect changes will be logged here. We cre we're creating a data channel here with the events that are part of the data channel. And here, if we are going to receive data on the data channel, we'll just cache the receiver data channel object here and print the message to the console. If you're connected, if you receive a connection on a track, that means it's a media track, either video or an audio stream track or both, we'll just forward this video stream track to the receive image in this, in this case, this is a, the raw image with the texture, or we're setting our output audio source to loop and play the audio that we're receiving here on negotiation needed is called if the connection changes and then we're going to start the WebRTC update co-routine. Um, you can also create the data channel, for instance, in the update method. I've just left it here if anyone wants to start the data channel later on, but in our case, it doesn't make any difference if we're starting it now or later on. Every time we're receiving a message on the WebSocket connection, which indicates our signaling, we're going to have our switch statement, which will handle all the signaling messages for us. Again, as it's in the previous tutorials, it's just having the signaling message type, reacting to that and send an answer or the candidate messages to the other clients. Otherwise, we're just logging the message as it is with the only WebSocket ID and then we connect the WebSocket. In the update method, we're just checking if the Boolean state variables have changed. And we're just starting to create the answers or the remote descriptions. Or the, on the other hand, the communication stuff like the data channel, the video and audio transmission, or only the WebSocket 
transmission. And this is where the magic happens. I'm just sending something via the data channel, which is the RTC data channel variable send in the text, or in the audio part, we're creating a stream track from the camera capture, which is an extension method provided by the WebRTC package from Unity. Give it to, give it to the source texture and add it to the connection as, as video stream track. And the same goes for the audio stuff. We're playing the audio local on our input source and send it over the network to the next client. Or just sending a message over the WebSocket here. And native WebSocket requires us to have this here for testing in the editor, dispatch the message queue, or if we're not in Unity WebGL, which can lead to serious problems if we forget that. So nothing will be triggered. I searched for this quite some time. And on this try, we're just trying to close everything down. And all the code that's coming here is the default signaling code for WebRTC. And here are the public methods, which are linked to the buttons of the canvas. Start audio video, send WebSocket test message, send WebRTC data channel message. This is the clear logs button, which will be part of the screen logger here. So everything is set up. This is basically everything you need. The script is as always in the scripts folder. There is a sample scene for that. And if you want to build it, go to file build settings. I build it for Android in my case. Check the scene, build and run. And after that, you can start the editor, start the app on your mobile. And as you see, we're already connected to our client. We're just starting the audio audio connection. Or sending something on the data channel. And that's it. It's that simple to create a WebRTC application for streaming data, audio, and video, everything combined. And the best part is we're only going to need one peer connection, which can handle everything of that. So that's it. I hope you liked the video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you have any suggestions. And again, feel free to become part of our YouTube community memberships with different tiers and on tier three, you will get access to the source code here. So that's it for now. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.